G'day guys, in this video I'm just going to go over how to write your own custom RFID tags for the Anacubic Color Engine or ACE. Um, it's the multi-coloured filament system that Anacubic has made for their um, new printers that are coming out. So um, the idea here is the same as the Creality one, you're just uh, writing to the tags to identify the type of filament that you put into the ACE box. So you'll need ultralight C tags or uh, NTAG 213 or any sort of tag that has uh, 36 pages or 144 bytes of user writable area. So you can kind of experiment with the tags uh, that you can find but I'm just using ultralight C because that's what I've got here. Um, I've made an Arduino code, uh, which is the same. It's all pulled from my Creality project for the uh, CFS, so it's very much the same. It's just modified to suit the ACE. It uses the ESP32, uh, the ESP8266 or the Pico W boards, and a RC522 card reader or writer. And of course I've got an Android app that also does it, so whichever one you want. I don't code for Apple so I don't have an Apple solution here apart from the Arduino code. Uh, this will host a web server and um, you'll be able to connect to it and change the filament settings uh, so you can tap on the tag and basically program it. So that'll allow you to use pretty much any operating system, anything with a web browser. But we'll go into the um, Android app and um, the filaments in here are the same ones that are in the Anycubic Next Slicer. So when you scan or you synchronize the filaments from the um, ACE box, it'll load up and detect the filaments correctly. Um, so there's no custom filaments or anything but what uh, any cubics got listed in their system. But anyway, you can select a filament. Um, there's a size or a length in the tag, but I don't think the printer's actually doing anything with it. So you can select it anyway. And then, of course, you've got your colour. So you can select whatever colour you want. Uh, you can drag, you know, basic colour. Um, the tags also have extruder temperature, so it's minimum, maximum, and bed temperature, uh, minimum, maximum. Now, I don't think that the printer's doing anything with these um, values, but I've put them in there because the tag has them. So it's fairly basic, you just scan a tag and then you select what you want and you just hit right. Now that tag will be um, written to so it'll have those values on it. So when you put it near the printer, which I'll show you in a minute, the ACE will uh, detect it and put the right settings in for the printer. The same goes for the Arduino code, you'll use the web page, you'll set the set settings which looks exactly the same as this and then you'll just tap the tag and it'll program the tag and then uh, so it's fairly simple uh, it's exactly like my um, CFS project and um, anyway we'll move on to the printer so I can actually show you it working and then we'll have a look at some of the code and I'll try and briefly explain the tag format. Alright we're at the printer now so the idea here with these tags is just you get a spool and you stick it to the side you could 3D print something that'll hold the tag because these are reusable. You can rewrite to them many times. So as you use the filaments, you can take them off and put them on other spools. Um, so you can maybe 3D print something to hold it there. And then um, you want to stick one on either side because on the ACE, uh, like the CFS and the AMS, the readers are in these middle two fins. So when you put a spool in this side, it's going to read from this side of it. When you pull a spool in that side, it's going to read from this side of it. So as you move the spools, it's going to read from either that side or that side. So putting a tag on either side allows you to put the spools anywhere in here. Okay, now it's a little bit tight here, so... Um, Kind of working to constraints but the idea here is you've got your app and then you're going to set your um, settings so we'll just say PLA marble we'll select the color and 600 grams we'll put the tag there we'll write to it and the data's written so you can put that away 
So normally you just stick it on the side of the spool, drop the spool in and feed it, but in this I'm just going to simulate it with a piece of filament. Um, so I'll just stick the filament in there. It's going to load and it detects the tag. So it'll show it's got PLO marble. It's kind of hard to see the writing, but it is PLO marble with the green. So as you'll see, it's PLO marble and green. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just get another tag and then we'll tap there. So we'll change this to say PTG and we'll make it red and we'll say one kilo. Doesn't really matter. And then we'll just write. So now we have a tag that's PTG. Okay, we've got another piece of filament, stick it in the hole, and then we'll detect the tag. And as you'll see it's PTG red. So you'll see PTG red. And that's what went into slot two. So that's it basically working anyway. Now we'll move on to the code and explain a bit. Alright, now we're at the desktop to have a look at some of the code. Um, firstly we'll just have a look at the Arduino web browser. As I showed you the Android app before, but I didn't show you the Arduino code. So it's fairly simple. You're just selecting your filament type, uh, your size, and then the color. Uh, just like the app. So you'll, co you'll connect to an access point created by the Arduino, and then you can set it to connect to your home network. So you can just connect to it via the home network. Um, you can go into the settings and it'll be ACE RFID. Uh, that's going to be the access point it broadcasts. And then um, in here you can set your Wi-Fi SSID and then the password. And then you can access it by um, HTTP ACE local. So um, that's how you can sort of set it up and then connect to it. So it's fairly simple. All you're doing is selecting a material. So you say PLA Glow, you can select size, and then you can select a colour, and then you just hit apply. And then once you've applied, you can just tap the, um, the tag on the reader, and it'll write the data to it. Now we'll go on to the code. Um, everything's on GitHub, so all of the source for the Android app and the Arduino codes are all up here. Again, um, you're using ultralight C tags and um, NTAG213. So pretty much all the information's there. Uh, this video I'm making now is going to go in place of this uh, video here, but this is the one for the uh, Creality RFID system I made. And then we'll just go on down here. So this is the response from the ACE unit to the printer when you load filaments. Um, on this link here, NO33, this is the communication protocol, which is in a file here. Uh, this is pulled from Anycubic's GitHub, um, so, and I've just translated the Chinese to English. And basically it just gives you some of the idea of what's being sent between the printer and the uh, ACE unit. So you can look into that if you want. Okay, we'll have a look at the tag page structure. Everything starts on page 4. I believe this may be a magic byte, so the um, printer can identify that it is actually an RFID tag for ACE, and then potentially a data length, not 100% sure, but it doesn't really matter because it works. Moving on down to page 5, this is where the product SKU starts. Uh, pages 5 to 8, I believe it's working in 16 byte blocks, but it may be 20 byte blocks because page 9 is all null bytes, so it could be 20 bytes or it could be 16. I'm just going with 16 because when you read um, pages with these ultralight tags, you're reading it in 16 byte increments or 4 page increments, I should say. So I'm just going to go with that it's 16 bytes. Um, so the product skew here, the printer doesn't seem to care for, not sure why they're doing it. And then uh, AC is the brand, as you'll see up here. Um, again, another 16 byte block or four pages. Uh, not sure why it's there, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going down to the next block, um, which is the filament type. At the moment, it's got PLA in it. And then up here you'll see the filament type is uh, the PLA. So that's where the filament type is. 
and then you're down to color. So uh, page 20 here, you'll see it's uh, I've put BGR color because these values are backwards. So normally it's red, green, and blue, but this, this byte sequence is swapped. Um, so it's BGR, and you're only targeting these three chars. Uh, the first two is what I believe would be alpha, but um, it's in there anyway. So we're only targeting those three chars, and you flip the bytes to get RGB. And then moving on down, you've got extruder temp on page 24. Um, it's C8, so the minimum is C800. You flip these, so it's 00 C8, and then you turn it into a decimal value from the bytes, and that'll give you a number, and that number will be 200 or whatever the minimum is. And then the same goes here. You flip those, and it'll give you a number. Same with hotbed temp, those two and those two. And then you've got filament parameters. Um, this is a float, so you flip those again, and that's the diameter, which is going to be 1.75. That's the thickness of the filament. And then the length. So again, you'll flip these, and that's going to give you 330. So that value is 330 meters, which is a kilogram of filament, which is roughly 330 meters. Um, this same sort of thing that uh, the CFS uh, does. And then these last bytes, I'm not quite sure what they are. It could be just an indicator for the end of the um, data, or I'm not 100% sure what they are, but it doesn't seem to affect it, so we'll just leave them as they are. So that's a basic rundown of the tag structure and the pages and where you need to write the data. Now obviously this information is obviously subject to change. This is just what I've worked out while going through um, trying to make this project and everything seems to be working. And another thing to note is that the ACE system uses the UID or serial number of the tag just to identify it um, in each spool. So um, it's not really something you need to worry about because you're going to have different tags on each spool, but just know that um, when a spool is loaded into the ACE system, it's using the UID of the tag to identify that spool. And lastly, we're just going up to Google Play where you can get the app. And here it's called Ace RFID. There's no ads or data collection or anything like that. It's 100% open source, so um, feel free to use it, play around with it, make your own, whatever you like. So I hope that helps you out writing your own RFID tags for the Anycubic Color Engine, or ACE, or what they call in some of their code AMS.